I created this video to demonstrate how to bind your device, uh, your camera from DJU, I think they call it the M1Q, to your network for the first time. And then I'll do a separate video on how to add it to your, um, how to modify the account. But in this video, you're going to see that getting bound to the remote via the mobile app. It's available for iPhone and for Android, so whichever device you have, just go to your app store. You want to download the app, DJUI, which you can see is one word. I've already downloaded it. When you first come into the app, it's going to ask you to set up an account. Now, I've already done that and logged into the device. And uh, once you're logged in with your new account, here's where you'll be. The first thing you're going to do is take your device, your camera, you're going to want to power it up. And you heard it, it just said, waiting for configuration. If you do not hear it say that, you want to take a paper clip, a small one, and you're going to see a small hole right there. You're going to just put straight up and down. There's a switch in there, and you'll push on it lightly, and you'll feel it click. Hold it for three or four seconds, let go of it, and you'll hear it say, settings set to default. Now, that's waiting for me to do it, so that uh, waiting for configuration is my go-ahead to start doing what I'm doing. So, on the initial setup, you're going to take your phone, which needs to be connected to your Wi-Fi in the house. You see, I'm, I am connected to the Wi-Fi here. The first time, you have to use Smart Link to connect the camera to your Wi-Fi. So, Smart Link, connect via Wi-Fi because this camera can't do a wired connection. You'll put, make sure you're on your home's network, and you'll put the Wi-Fi password for your network there. Hit Next Step. It says, wait to hear the configuration uh, audio, which she just said it. So we've heard it, so we heard it. We hit that. It says, turn louder your phone's volume. A little bit of bad uh, Chinese English, but we know what she means. I've actually found this will not work if your phone volume is turned up. I've turned the phone volume down drastically. I have it uh, probably three clicks, and it works much better. And I found that's why I couldn't get it to connect the first couple times. And I also don't hold it right over top. I separate the space a little bit, so watch this. Here's the first thing. And she's going to... One configuration down. And so here's where you can name the camera. Let's say I'll call it uh, front door. Or you can call it uh, camera one, whatever you want. And then the default password from factory is 2016. 0404, which is the birth date of the company. And up at the top right here in this corner, you'll see it says save. I hit save. Addition succeeded. Now you notice there's a little uh, red shield right there. That means there's a special error message. You touch that. And the very first time you set up a camera with this app, it's going to say you need to change that default password to something of your own. So I'm going to type in the original first, which is 2016-0404. And then I'm going to put my own password in there. Then I'll type it again to confirm it. So I've got them in there and I hit done. Hit save. Successful operation. And the camera's now connected. Now this little initial image, you'll see it says the camera's online right there. That initial image will not move. I can move like this and it does not do anything. I gotta go into it. And then it says it's loading. And there we have live feed. Other thing worth noting, right here that SD, you touch that. Standard definition gets you the high speed uh, feed. Good picture, not the best picture, but it's going to use less of your cell phone data if you're going to access this server cellular. You put it up in high def, and there's going to be more of a lag between the time the image comes into the camera to it actually gets to your phone but it's going to get you a very high definition picture. And of course there's low definition if you need to minimize the amount of data your cell phone uses. But I'll leave it on uh, standard data. And then of course you can go into here. You go into device information, it'll tell you about the camera, what version of firmware it has, time setting, you can adjust your date, the time zone you're in. If you're on the East Coast, it's negative five. If you're uh, Central America, or Central time zone, it's going to be negative six and so on and so forth. Um, media settings, if you're in America, you're gonna go NTSC. Europe and many other countries use PAL. 
on the back of the camera, there's a speaker right here in this big round area. And you have the ability to communicate from your mobile device at a different location to that camera. This volume right here dictates how loud that speaker in the back is. You'll see the picture inversion. If you hang the camera up by the hook, then the image is going to be normal. If you have the camera, one second, get a lot of feedback through the microphones. If you have the camera hung by the cord where it's upside down, you're going to need to invert the image so that it looks normal on your screen. It'll be up, it'll be right side up. But I'll put it back. Then we have safety settings where you can set an admin password so only you can adjust the settings of the uh, camera. And you can set a guest password so other people can view it, but they can't adjust the settings. Highly recommend using that. Uh, defense settings, not supported. Network settings, if you want to change over to a different uh, Wi-Fi network, remember this only works on a 2.4 gig network. Will not work on the newer high-speed 5 gig networks. Um, we got alarm settings where you can set uh, if you receive it via push note on the phone or a text message or an email for motion detection. These lower two options are not supported by this camera. That This app works for many of their different models, not this one. Then we have video record settings where if there's a micro SD card in the side of the camera you can put that in there and then it will record or yeah actually record whatever it is it's viewing as it comes it does not record so you either need to use a micro sd card to record or you need to have the camera feed going back to a network video recorder or commonly referred to as an nvr and uh, those devices will allow you to have multiple cameras being recorded by one central device and the company Diju makes a nice little 12 channel nvr it's about Anywhere from $26 to $50, depending on where you purchase it. And it works very well. Then we have uh, sensor support. This is not on here. DJ makes different sensors that this app will work with. That's where you can add them. And then check device update. You always want to make sure your device has the latest firmware, unless some people say that the firmware causes problems. But otherwise, we must assume that the new firmware makes it more secure, more stable, work better, and maybe sometimes even add new features. So all you have to do is touch that, it'll check. If there's an update available, which there was when I first powered this up the first time, it'll say, do you want to update? You hit yes, and for a couple of minutes, it goes back and forth, and then it's done. Um, there you have it. And now, oh, we'll go back into there. Oh, right here, back, reconnect. Here's my live feed, and if I go in here and turn my Wi-Fi off, it might drop its connection if I go back out here. Still says it's online. Now I'm connected, you'll see it says up there LTE. And if I wave, does it still get it? But if I go into it, let's find out. Loading. And it does tell you at first how many people are viewing this feed, audiences. There's only one person, and that's me. If I move over top, you'll see it'll register it, and I'm connected through my cell. So it did it does not require a uh, port opening to use this app. Now I'm going to close the phone out. I'm going to let you know uh, that this camera does support what is called ONVIF O N V I F support, uh, which is commonly used uh, for all mainstream network-based or IP-based uh, security cameras feeding back to the system. I know Windows machines can log into this through that on VIF. It does support TCP IP for the techies out there that know what that means and several other protocols. It does auto switch to on VIF so there is no setting in there to go and mess with that. One other thing to note is there's a little small hole right here at the bottom next to the cable. You see that small hole right there? That is the microphone input port. It does hear quite well. It's not a beautiful sound, but it allows you to keep an ear on what's going on. As well, around this trim ring out here, the larger ring, there is uh, infrared LEDs in there for night vision. They're not super strong, but they do work well. 
This little hole up top here is the sensor that tells it whenever it's dark in the room. If I put my finger over to see if they'll come on here once. There you see. Or they're, okay, so they're in the inner ring. Those little red things, those can be seen at night. They are not bright. It's actually very dim. They look brighter on the image. But that's putting off a bunch of infrared light that allows the camera to see a black and white nighttime image. Also inside here, there's a little green LED that tells whenever the power is on. So if you don't want people to know when the power is on, I would put like a piece of black tape or something over there to cover that hole. Um, last but not least, you'll see right there on the side, there's a little clip. There's one over here. You could have this cut a hole about the size of this inner circle and have this go through and those allow it to snap into a mount. And I would assume there are different mounts or different shrouds that can go over this, but I've not seen them. All in all, it's an impressive little camera. Uh, this has been running for now 10 minutes and it's a little warm, but nothing of consequence. It's worked well for me and at a price point that is as low as $15 or $20 at most uh, retailers available, as high as $30 depending on where you get it, uh, it's definitely a good steal. And we'll see how it goes from here. And thank you and if you like uh, these videos, please uh, leave me comments, ask me questions, or give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel.